Okay, everybody, it's it's, it's 12.30 Lima time. It's time to start. We've had a lot of people register and uh, some are still coming in, but I think it's time to start. The first thing is to welcome you. Thank you for tuning in. Good afternoon and welcome to the sixth episode of our Online with an Expert series uh, that we're hosting here at Arakari. Many of the faces I'm seeing are familiar faces and um, uh, welcome again. For those again to are tuning in from the USA uh, or Americans celebrating Thanksgiving, well, happy Thanksgiving to you all. Um, a few weeks ago, we were taken on a journey of the magic of quinoa by Jose Luis Lescano, our, our speaker today. And he today will be taking us on a journey of Peru's natural world. In this fascinating talk about the therapy therapy of bird watching and birds of Peru. For those who don't know me, my name is Marisol Mosquera and I'm owner of Aracari and founder of Aracari, a company I founded with a mission of sharing knowledge and experiences from our country and region, the Andes, with the world by means of connecting you to the best that our countries have to offer. And therefore thrilled today to reintroduce you to the multifaceted and charismatic Jose Luis Lescano, who is a keen and dedicated specialist guide on Andean culture and especially its natural history. Jose Luis was born in Lima and moved to Cusco over 15 years ago where he lives with his family. He has worked in tourism um, and is a licensed expedition and naturalist guide and uh, guiding birders on trips around all of Peru. As many of you know, Peru is one of the most biodiverse countries in the world with one of the highest number of endemic bird species. Jose Luis is very busy and currently working on a video series on Peruvian bird life for the Peru Tourist Board amongst other projects. Uh, Jose Luis has um, worked with us for a number of years and has developed a number of routes for Aracari's family of birders. Today, Jose Luis will not only introduce us to the birds of Peru, but will also introduce birding's therapeutic properties in these difficult times that we're living, especially necessary, and also highlighting that birding is a family affair too. Uh, before I hand over to Jose Luis, a few housekeeping matters. Please mute your microphone so there's no background noise. If you have questions, please put them during the course of the presentation on your chat box and we will make sure that we answer them live at the end of the talk, which will take one hour, including um, questions and answers. And at the end, of course, we can, you can, Jose Luis is very animated. So, you know, he may, he may be asking you for your opinion during the course of the talk. So feel free to gesture or put it in the chat box when he asks you. This, ta this talk is being recorded and we will send you the recording in a couple of days as we've been doing all through this time. And uh, without further ado, here is Jose Luis. Welcome, Jose Luis. Bienvenido. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, well, happy to be here once more. Uh, Marisol, thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity to share this special day uh, with all the Aragari friends. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Unfortunately, in Peru, we don't have that, that tradition. Yes, but, well, my, my mom, uh, she lived in California a long 10 years. Uh, she's a spiritual woman, a spiritual person. And when she came back, she came with a Thanksgiving tradition. And since a kid, she always taught me that the, the gratitude maybe is one of the best attitudes that we can have. And definitely I'm, I'm grateful uh, having this love, this hobby, this passion for the nature, for the birds living in Peru is to say thanks, yeah? Peru, you must know, or maybe you know that is the second best country all over the world, uh, talking about diversity of birds. And my love for the birds, well, my love for the nature comes from 
many, well, many, many years ago when I was a kid and I was a Boy Scout. And I remember when I uh, got my animal friend's badge, yes. I feel me so proud in that moment, yes. The friends of the animals when I was 10, 12 years old. And since that moment, I always uh, love and respect the environment and all the beings that are part of it. Well, but the truth is that when I became a, a guide or when I study or when I decide to become a guide, it wasn't for nature. The truth, when I decide to become a guide, it was more for the archeologist. Uh, part of my childhood was shared with a aunt and uh, my mother, the sister of my mom. She was a area director in the Museum of History, Archaeologists and Anthropologists in Lima. I was 10, 12 years old. I am spent several hours of several days uh, in this museum, yes, curiously observing the, the potteries, the textiles. Every day it was like a part of my life, yes, watching the mummies. And I, I'm sure that many kids may be scary, but many, many kids love the mummies. But in my case, the truth, I was fascinated with the chronologies table. You cannot imagine yes, how many cultures do we have in Peru, on the coast, on the Andes, yes. Someone's trying to get into the, into the jungle. Uh, and I was really fasc fascinated with the periods of the time with all the cultures that we have here. Um, for that experience is that I wanted to become archeologist. Definitely I wanted to become archeologist or perhaps anthropologist. But the truth is that it's a difficult mega living in Peru, yes, with those professions in those years. I was also interested in teaching, but also that was another not very suitable profession in Peru, unfortunately, in those years. However, uh, um, due different circumstances, once I arrived to Senfotur. Senfotur is a tourism college, but in this case, regarding uh, asking about gastronomy, gastronomy courses, the gastronomy career. So I went to San Futur to this institute to ask about the gastronomy and bartender uh, career. And I saw in that moment a site that says guide, tourism guide. I couldn't believe, I, I was in shock. I, I, I couldn't believe that I can study for that. And really I did the question that later I hear uh, from many tourists towards to me, do you need to study to become a guide? Uh, well, sounds fun, but uh, it's the question that I hear many times. And the truth, in Peru, guiding is a profession. It's a professional profession. And we invest many years studying archaeologists, anthropologists, psychologists, different lines. So at the end, I finally ended up being a bit of each of the careers that I originally wanted to take. So I feel me today a little, not like a professional with all the respect, but a little archaeologist in my heart, a little anthropologist, yes, and a little biologist too. Once in one study trip, I went to the jungle, to the central jungle of Peru for one native community celebration. And I got in touch, I contacted uh, some native communities of the central jungle of Peru. Janeshas and Ashaninkas. 
I was 20, 20 years old, 19 years old, and I was fascinated with all the knowledge that these people manage. And where we have native communities, we have nature. And in this nature, in one moment, I ended up surrounded for this, orchids. I know that today we're gonna to talk about birds, but the truth, when I start, when I began with the nature, I did with the orchids. I was fascinated with these plants that you must know that are the most intelligent plants all over the world. Orchids develop their own shapes, colors, sizes, it, just to attract a specific insect pollinator. Yes, and I was crazy for the orchids. And where you can see orchids growing, where you see trees, where you see bushes, where you see nature, you will see this, birds. Peru, you must know that has more than 1,800 different types of birds, yes? And when we talk about birds, in my case, it's a total ceremony, yes? Since the day before I prepare my year, I study the, the sounds of the birds that I'm looking for. I'm, look, I'm study about the habitats, about everything the birds, and early in the morning in the next day, I go there. And sometimes I can stay, as many of you, if you are bird watchers, hours, hours contemplating. Yes, just contemplating the birds. Sometimes with a piece of bread, my chocolate bar, yes, and my coffee mug, but I can stay hours just focus in a place, in an area, in a specific bird. Happens that I'm also a photographer. And as a photographer, sometimes you need hours in a specific point waiting for the best light the best moment to get the best shot. One day, once, I asked my mom to come with me to do bird watching in a lake that is close to Cusco. We call this lake Huacarpay Lake. It's uh, 3,100 uh, 3, meters above sea level. We have different types of birds there. I can spend, well, a day, full day. And I say, my mom, come with me. Yeah? And she said, okay, I will go, but I will go with my mat. She's a yoga trainer. So she went to, with me, but she went to practice yoga while I was looking for the perfect picture of the rusty front canastero. It's an endemic bird, not so colorful, not, maybe not so much beautiful, but endemic and beautiful but very elusive, moving to one place to another place so fast, difficult to get a picture. And we'll, every 20 minutes, 30 minutes, my mom came to me to ask me, yeah, did you get a picture? She was in that moment fascinated with my passion, just waiting there, yeah? And in one moment she said to me, do you realize that in that moment, you are making a kind of meditation. I copy her, her, her words that I want to share with you. Sitting, focus on the now. Focus on yourself and your senses. Breathing slowly and silently, waiting for a bird. With your gaze towards a flower, a stone, a tree, feeling as one at a harmony with the nature. Yes, that, my friends, that is a type of meditation. That, my friends, is a therapy. Being, place, being in a special places, yes, feeling yourself one with the nature is, is a therapy. And I'm lucky, I said to you, because we have places like this in my country, yes? And many of those places are close to Cusco, yeah? 
uh, we were here like seven months in the quarantine, just doing urban or garden bird watching yes, from our windows. But when the government opened the borders, I just ran away in my space with my family just to look for the birds, uh, well, close to, to my house. And as I said to you, yes, it's just the sitting, watching, yes, sometimes not the birds, watching the landscape is fascinating. And it's the best that we can share with our kids, with our children, our uh, great daughters or great sons. Uh, I mentioned the Boy Scouts and I feel me so happy when I found in the Boy Scouts that they encourage, yes, uh, for the love of the nature. And I'm trying to do that with my, my daughter. My daughter has a Iver account and I'm sure that my daughter now, five years old, she has more endemic birds in her list than many, many friends with my age. But one thing that also we are gonna love in the bird watching is the gift of the watching. Watching is not looking. Looking is when we see something without paying attention. And watch is paying attention of the behavior, of the moment, of the characteristic, the features of the things that we are watching in that moment. As example, I'm sharing with you the pictures of a group of Chilean flamingos. Yes. Regular common in the Peruvian coast, and sometimes we can see in our lakes here in Cusco. Yes. In the southeast part of Peru, we have other type of flamingos, but this one is the most popular, Chilean flamingo. So the question is, uh, and I wanna see your chat or maybe Monica can help me. Yes, did you see the flamingos, right? Yeah. I wanna open the chat. Sorry if I'm not so good with this. Oh, my question is, do you remember the color of the flamingos? Somebody can tell me which colors did you see in the flamingos? Pink. Pink. Very good. And the next question is, which colors the beak? Which colors did you see on the beak? Red, pink, and white. Red, pink, and white, yes, the body. But the beak. Black. Marisol, very Marisol. good. You were watching. You didn't look, you were watching. And one step further, which colors had the knees? Did you see the knees? Did you pay attention about the knees of the... Always we are gonna go to the biggest part, yes, and wow, the pink, fascinating color of the flamingos, but haha, <laughs> yellow. Mark, thank you for your answer. Granny, let's see once more. The colors are pink, and it's one of the characteristics to realize, to check if is this kind of a uh, flamingo or is other kind of flamingo. Happens that in Peru we have many birds like this one, okay? And sometimes doing, practicing, bird watching, we only have seconds, seconds to see one bird. As you saw before, that beautiful bird. Any idea about that bird? That one will, I will make it easier. Kingfisher, yes, once more, one second, okay? And which of those three is that king bird, a kingfisher, pardon? Did you see the colors? Can you see if the kingfisher that I showed was the number one, the number two, or the number three? Did All of them. 
all of them <laughs> okay we have three. one That's one three. one three three one okay one is winning let's see three <laughs> three Number three, the, the American pygmy kingfisher. When you practice bird watching, you are gonna develop, yes, this gift, I can consider gift, yes, the possible to watch. All of us, like uh, hunters for many, many years in the past, we used to see in front of us, but when you practice bird watching, sometimes you have us watching the canopy, yes, like this, yes, that we have a terrible pain in the neck, yes, but we see to different places where no many people used to see. And I really love when my daughter, when my daughter, five years old, she now used to see 360 degrees. Yes, surrounding her up and down. That is part of the benefits of the bird watching. I mentioned it, that Peru is blessed yes. because we have three natural regions where we can practice, when we can develop this, this hobby. The cost. Maybe you already heard about Ballestas Islands. Ballestas Islands are just a few hours from Lima. And the most interesting about this area is that we can see some kind of Humboldt current endemic birds. And also we see, or we will see birds like this. Well, this one is in the wetlands, Pisco wetlands, close where we were catch the boats to go the the Ballestas Islands. So this one is not in an island, it's uh, in, a, in another area in Pisco. But this one, Inca Turn. So when you start watching, you will pay attention about the beautiful mustache, the red color of the legs, yes. And you can spay, uh, spend hours just watching birds like this. The blue foot booby that is more common, more popular in Galapagos Islands, but also that we can see in Pucusana is a beach close to Lima, just one hour, one hour and a half to Lima, or Ballestas Islands. Or this one, the fascinated red leg cormoran. Uh, a week ago, I had a cooking class with kids, eight years old, 10 years old in a Californian school. Yes, by Zoom, I was teaching them how to cook some Peruvian dishes. But in one moment, I shared with them some of those pictures and this bird was the best for them. Yes, the red leg cormorant. Also, we have the Andes. And that's the most important about the birds, about the nature in Peru. The Andes, give to us different altitudes. And with different altitudes, different locations, we will have different uh, environments. So the chance to have different birds according to the different, uh, the different altitudes. This one is the Wairapunku, the, the door of the wind. Some people call it the, the door of the sun because sometimes of the year you can see the sun through the door. But in this way is where we also can see a, a special birds or Abra Malaga. A week ago, uh, one week and a half ago, I was there uh, with snow everywhere. And it's crazy how many birds can live in those conditions, how many birds were adapted to those altitudes, to those conditions. On the way that Paucartambo, that also is uh, part of our Andes. 
and Polylepis woodland in an Inca trail. If you come to Peru looking for birds, or bird watchers know that Polylepis woodlands, Polylepis forest, is a must because we have some specific birds related with this kind of environment. And definitely therapy, yes, being in a places like this, yes. If you love or not birds, you definitely will love that kind of nature. In Cusco, the most popular, the giant hummingbird. Uh, well, just one meter from here, I have a feeder in my window. Um, some giant hummingbirds just to, to come, yes, to my feeder. You know, well, there's different positions about the feeders. I'm not agree really with feeders in the wild, but in the cities, especially in South American cities, we are losing the flowers, we are losing just the green. So we can help those, those birds with the feeders. Oh, this fascinated bird, teeth like Dagnis, also related with a polylepis forest. This one was, was in Guaraz. We went with my family to Chavín. Chavín is one of the oldest archaeological sites in the north of Peru, in the Andes site, and we had this place. The only hummingbird we get in Quebec is the rabbit-throated hummingbird. Do you find it in Peru? No, no, we don't have the, the rabbit-throated, uh, but we have another um, 125 a species of hummingbirds. Yes, it is fun. When, when we were in, in UK, uh, in the bird fair, uh, in Rutland, we were there, uh, some Peruvian travel agencies specializes in birds, and we went representing the government of Peru. And when the Peruvian team arrived to one of the stands, one of the areas, Everybody was complaining, yes, because no, it's not fair. We don't want to be close to Peruvians and Colombians, they said. Yeah? They have many birds to see and we only have 20. Oh, I remember, I really love Chile. I have many friends in Chile. I respect them too much. But I remember the first time when I went to, to Chile and we were watching some birds and one hummingbird flew up, but so fast. I couldn't see the tail, I couldn't see the beak, I couldn't, I just see something, I just saw something flying so fast. And the guide said, this hummingbird, no man, it's impossible. Yeah? You didn't hear, you didn't see, how do you know that it was that kind of hummingbird? We only have only one kind of hummingbird, he said to me. Yeah, so when we see hummingbirds in Peru, in Colombia, it's more complex. Uh, quite a nice picture, the little girl and the, <laughs> thank you, yes, my, my, my daughter. The woodland, ah, you were asking about the woodland, sorry, I didn't see the, the question before. This was is in the Inca Trail. Uh, it's in the second, in the second day of the Inca Trail, but woodlands like this of Polylepis, we have different types of this tree. Uh, we have surrounding Cusco. It's a special tree that will grow uh, upper than 3,500 meters above sea level. And you must know that at 4,800, 5,000, nothing grows. Yes, the conditions are extreme. Yes, complex conditions. But this is a kind of tree that can grow, can develop in, in areas really, really cold. Yes, a type of woodpecker. Yes, Andean flicker, we call. Uh, this one, when you go to Sacsayhuaman, the, the most, one of the most important citadels just here, uh, 20 minutes from the, uh, from the Cusco Square, the main square. In some areas, you can see this, this bear feeding there, walking there. Um, I love my favorite part 
of Peru talking about birds is the cloud forest. This is the Manu Road. Yes, it's amazing because just in two hours, you can descend from the 4,000 meters above sea level going down to 500 meters above sea level. Yes, so in a short distances, you cross different gra graduations, yes, with different types of birds every place. Of course, a bird watcher don't do this place or this road in two hours. Yes, we used to take four days, five days for those uh, 150 kilometers. This one is Winaywaina. It's some hours walking before the Machu Picchu in the classic Inca Trail. Or when you do the short Inca Trail, you will pass through this place. And here you can see the fascinating vegetation. And it's just because it's the cloud forest. So giving the humidity to have this kind of moose, eh, lichens, eh, bromelias, orchids, bamboo, and of course the birds there. As in Peru, you may find them, for example, where, ah, yes, Janganuco Lake, yes, Walter. Eh, the picture that I showed before Yes, the blue, uh, like Dagnis, was uh, next to Chavin in the area of Yanganuco. You can say there's the same, uh, the same area than Yanganuco. And in the cloud forest, the kings, or some of the kings are the tanayers. We have 100 types of tanayers in Peru. All, all of them colorful, yes. Well, also moving, moving, moving a lot that is difficult to, to get a good picture, but sometimes we can get one. Scarlet belly, yes, mountain finch in Ajanaco Pass, where the Manu Road starts. Yes, we have some tanayers that are part of the cloud forest. We have some tanayers that we can see in those altitudes like almost 4,000 meters above sea level. Or this one, yes, the green J. This one you can see close to Machu Picchu. Or, let me move this to here. Okay, oh no. The black and chestnut eagle. This one was my lifer just uh, a week ago in the Manu Road. It was the first time that I saw this bird. It's uh, a mature, yes, it's not adult, but we, we were driving the car with my wife and the cameraman who is making a, a videos that we are gonna launch in January. And in one moment we saw something white, huge crossing the road Yes, I'm perching just almost in front of us. So I had to, to stack there the car, yes, in a narrow road where only can pass one car per time. And I said, my wife, please stop everybody. And we start making photos and photos and photos of this bird, yes. At the end, we had like five cars behind us, but everybody was practicing bird watching. Uh, more chat, okay. Uh, yes, uh, Veronica, you have a question. If the birds are the same, definitely we are going to share uh, birds with Ecuador and with Colombia. Yes, and in some, con uh, well, and in Peru we have some birds that Ecuadorians don't have, and the same they have some birds in the cloud forest that they don't have. Remember that they are more in a tropical area. So also our forest, our jungle, our cloud forest should be pretty different in some cases. With Ecuadorians, we share also the Tumbesian birds. Tumbesian is the north part of Peru and the south part of Ecuador. And in this area, 
just close or around the border of Peru and Ecuador. Remember that the birds don't believe in borders, yes? Um, we have some, some birds specific or endemics of these parts of the South Ecuador and the North uh, of Peru in the coast area too. Thanks for your questions. Uh, if you have more questions, I would be happy to answer. And the rainforest. This is Pacaria Samilia in Iquitos, Loreto, uh, the North Jungle of Peru, closer to Ecuador and Bolivia, uh, Ecuador and Colombia, closer than Tambopata. Tambopata and Manu is closer to Brazil, Bolivian side. Uh, does Peru have migratory birds? Which so we have a question about migratory boards, birds. And yes, I'm looking, Emmy. Thank you, Emmy, for the question. Right Asia. now, yes, your your winter, the American uh, United States winter, is the moment when we have migratory birds here. But the nicest is that also we will have migratory birds coming from the north when is the the winter there but also we have migratory birds from the south, from the areas, from the southest parts of Chile and Argentina that comes also through Peru in the uh, south winter. So we have two types of migration. Well, we really have three types of migrations, yes? The north, the boreal migrations, yes, the south migration, and also we have a altitude graduation. It happens that in the a strong winter, in the dry season in the Andes, no many flowers and many birds, including hummingbirds, will go down. Yes, will descend. Yes, looking for flowers in areas that are not part of their regular life. But after that, they come back when the flowers start blooming. Uh, for me, September, October is the best season because we are still having the north migratory migra uh, migration birds that are starting going up, but also we have the migratory birds coming from the south. So September, October, and March, uh, April are the moments when we can find the two migrations sometimes together, like Elaenias from the south, plovers from the north. Yes. Um, yes, uh, but uh, pay attention that most of the migratories are uh, shorebirds. Yes, I know that Colombia has uh, some migratories in the cloud forest coming from the, the southest part of US, but here the most popular migratory birds will be shorebirds. Well, and some eagles like the peregrine, uh, hawk, or the, the bird that you have, the osprey, Yes, also comes or used to come to, to Peru. Well, and someone's used to stay here. Well, the low jungle, yes, or the rainforest, where this is one of the most fascinating birds. You can see everywhere, yes. It's not like others like ant strikes and birds that you are looking between the bushes. Yes, this is common but it's still being fascinating. We call the Hoatzin, Opistocomus Hoatzin, that looks like a, I don't know, yes, from many, many years ago, this bird. And it will be there, yes, showing up. Yes, they move the wings, yes. They love pictures. A good question from Mr. Llanos about why the Laguna Huarpay draws so many birds in Cusco. Yes, Juan, thank you for your question. Uh, in the migrations, the, the birds, migratory birds, will have different roles. Yes, remember that we have different ways to get to Roma, yes, so to go to Roma. So many birds coming from the north will come through through Peru, going to southern parts, and they will come by the Pacific uh, side. Some ones will come by the Atlantic side, and some ones will come just yes, through the Andes. 
and those birds are flying kilometers, hundreds of kilometers, thousand, really thousand kilometers in some kinds of, of specific uh, migratory birds, and they need to rest. So that's why they are looking yes, for some specific lakes in the Andes. That's why the, the, the Andean lakes are really important because it's the resting place for many birds that are traveling kilometers and kilometers. And that's why we are so focused and worried how do the government, the local governments protect those lakes because in my in you, you are traveling and you know that you have a gas station in that kilometer. You are gonna refill your car with gas. So all your plants are arriving to that place. It's the same with the birds. They think, okay, the last year and the last year and the last year, I was arriving to that place. They arrive and we have a fire, we have new buildings, we already impact in the lake and those, those birds are lost. Yes, that's why the lakes are important. And Huacarpay is a group of four lakes, four lagoons. And it's not too impacted for the cities. No many people, yes, hopefully, no many people around. So we can still watching many migratory birds in this, in this lake that is just 30 minutes close to here, Juan. Lola Blunt would like to know how large. Yeah, I think, uh, Monica, maybe we should continue and answer the questions at the end as we agree because uh, that. Oh, okay. We, I, I will continue. Later we will come back with the, with the questions. Uh, Chestnut Earth, Arasari or Aracari, you know that name. <laughs> yes, so it's one of my favorites in the, in the rainforest. Uh, we can see in Sandoval Lake. Yes, and other areas of the jungle. Oh, you already recognized the first one in the upper part, yes, with the white belly. Yes, we have kingfishers, yes, are pretty cute. Yes, always on the streams or the rivers in the Oxbow Lakes. But also as a photo of a bird watcher guide traveling through Peru, through the jungle, yes, I developed my my hobby for the photos, for the photograph. And being in the young, in, in the right moment, you can get pictures like this. Others, yes, that are pretty common. Uh, it's not so a special picture, really. Uh. If you go to Sandoval Lake, you can see others like this eating, yes, fishes, fish at that moment. The caimans, frogs who love or like frogs, snakes, insects, or the curiously monkeys also. Yes, we have different type of monkeys. Some of them we can see also in the man road. And what about the sound? Okay, I wanna do now another exercise. Mm. I will see a Somebody can uh, answer me if you already visit Machu Picchu. Can you say yes, 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 if you already visit Machu Picchu, my friends? To, to know if some of you already. Yes, yes, Raquel. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> All of you, very good. So, in Machu Picchu, this is. I don't know if you hear it. It was a uh, good the sound. Yes, perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When we talk perfect. about the picture, always I think in that sound. For me, Machu Picchu sounds like this. This is the Inca grain. It's a, a bird, an endemic bird that is only in bamboo areas. We call bamboo patches or patches of bamboo. Uh, yes, beautiful, yeah. It's, it's amazing the sound. So one of the exercise, good exercise that we do when we are building is connecting the size 
with the seeing, with the hearing. Many times we are not gonna see the birds, yes? But we are gonna realize, realize that are there just because we hear. So when we hear, ah, the Inca grain is here. And this bird, when you visit Machu Picchu, you will hear all the time, especially in the path from Machu Picchu Citadel to the Sun Gate. Other one. I will share first the, the songs and later I will show you the match. So you will keep the, the sound uh, on your mind. This one is not so nice thing or song, but That bird is the Peruvian national bird. The cock of the rock. That one is the female. It's not so, so bright, but here we have the male. Yes, somebody brother, Gladys, yes, cock of the rock. Very good, you recognize the sound before then I show the picture. Yes, the cock of the rock is, is other one. And the last one, yes, how do you go with this one? Uh, if we have bird watchers in the group, you will recognize. Imagine that you don't know this bird and you're in the middle of the rainforest, or in this case, cloud forest, and you hear, yes, a sound like that. It's, it's crazy, everything green surrounding you, and you hear that, boop, boop. The mot mot, yes, the Andean mot mot. In Colombia, the people call it barranquero. Here, we call a, in Spanish, we can say the watchmaker. Yes, Gladys, relojero. The watchmaker, relojero, because these birds move its tails. Like an old, yes, clock or old watch. And the crazy is that the three birds that already share, I share with you, the Inca grain, the cog of the rock, and the relojero, the mod mod, you can see next to Machu Picchu, yes? When we go to Machu Picchu, we used to go to the archeological site, and we don't realize sometimes that at the bottom of Machu Picchu, we have this other treasure, birds, yes? Mm. If there are people just yes, now, my friends in this group that wanna introduce yourself in the bird watching, yes, binoculars. What happened with the binoculars? The binoculars are important. Uh, I have a good British friend, yes, Mark Smith. He's amazing bird watcher. He, he goes crazy and he built his house his house in Huacarpay. It's a British that is living just 30 minutes uh, out of Cusco in front of one of the most important lakes in Cusco for bird watching. And he said to me, I don't need binoculars because I like to see the behavior, yes, of the birds. When we use uh, binoculars, we're gonna see the details, but we are not gonna see the behavior. So it's up to you what do you wanna see. Of course, in my case, I do both, yes? But if you wanna pay attention about the details of the birds, if you wanna see the colors, the colors of the eye, yes, the, the color of the, of the tail, the binoculars will be important. Itipata, near to Winaywaina. Ah, very good, Mario, yes. Intipata, yeah. 
uh, near to Intipata, uh, in the areas of Winyaiwana, you can see also wood quails. Uh, no, be beautiful Winyaiwana, Intipata is, is fascinating area of the Inca Trail. Okay, this one, yes, this anthrike, yes, uh, you can see the details. Yes, imagine that you are using uh, binoculars and which kind of binocular I can recommend? Well, it will depend, of course, which place are you visiting? Imagine, I have this one. <gasps> Jose is a big one, so it's the best one, yeah? No, this one is because I'm going to a lake and I will have birds so far away and I need to see closer or with the telescope or with the scope, I will see. But imagine if I go to the jungle, to the cloud forest where we have trees together, yes, close to us. If I do this, I won't see nothing. But if I go to a trail, yes, that is pretty close, narrow, with many trees and it's dark. I have my small Swarovski. Yes, so are small, a lighty, but the, the crystal, yes, well, you know Swarovski has amazing quality just to get the light. But if I'm going with my camera and I will do the Inca trail and I will work four days carrying this camera, I will bring just a monocular. So it's depending the activity or the place that you are gonna visit. But if you wanna start, yes, a regular one is 8.42 or 10.42, yes. This it will be a good one, yes, it's versatile. With this one, you can go to lakes, you can go to, uh, to the forest, to the woodlands, yes. So this one is the most versatile and is the kind of, of binoculars that you will see everywhere. But the most important is always making the homework, we call it the bird watching. Making the homework means reading, studying, especially in Peru. Happens that when I go to some place where are not many birds, I can go and I will just detect new ones and easy to recognize. But you must know that when you come to Peru, you must study and study a lot if you wanna find the birds. Just around Machu Picchu, remember 500 types of, uh, of birds. Or just in Huacarpay Lake, depending the season with the migratories, 130, 150 different types of birds. So many, many birds to recognize and many of those pretty similar. How I'm going with the time? Oh, okay, I will run. Uh, I was talking about the hummingbirds in Peru, 125 types or species. One is the swordbill. Yes, one of those 125. Yes, definitely we have beautiful hummingbirds. Uh, but this is one of my favorites and it's easy to see in, in an area close to Cusco, we call Janawara. It's a Janawara town. And one friend of mine, he's having feeders and he has 10 to 13 different types of hummingbirds there. So you can see birds like this, the shining sunbeam. Okay, Mario, I will answer you in a minute. Good question. Uh, the wild crest thornbill, this one is in Manu, in the Manu Road, Cloud Forest. The, the Vesper, Oasis Hummingbird uh, in Arequipa, yes, making the, its nest. Oh, look this one. Yes, this one is one of my favorite hummingbirds. In the north of Peru, we have the marvelous spatula tail. Unfortunately, in, in the southeast part, we don't have that bird, but we have this one that is beautiful. Yes, the festive coquette. Or the booted racket tail. As example, eh, we know about one program that just in eight days, you can watch, you have the chance to see 40 different types of hummingbirds in Cusco area, yes? And if you plus the programs in the north of Peru that they also offer 
for the hummingbirds in 10 uh, days, imagine that around 14, 15 days, you can get more than, than 60 or, well, you can get the 80 types of hummingbird of the 125 that we have here. And the nicest about bird watching is that you can practice everywhere. You can see birds, you can watch birds in your gardens, in the parks. And the nicest is that you can do with your family. It's, uh, it's really interesting, important if we involve the kids in this activity. Yes, not pushing, yes. I was talking with some friends and they said to me, you must push too much your daughter. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I'm just sharing with her my passion when she wants, she comes with me. And when she when she doesn't want, okay, don't don't worry. Yeah. And in this way, she already understands how to love, how to appreciate, and how to protect the, the, the environment. This is the future. Yes, we are now pretty old, yes, but it's not in our hands, but it's in the hands of five years old kids, 10 years old kids, yes. The, the future of the world, of, the, of our world. And one of the best ways to involve, to encourage them is relating them with the bird watching. Just to finish, yes, sorry with the time, Marisol, don't kill me. <laughs> endemic birds, well, just because you asked me, Marisol, about the endemic birds of Peru two days ago. So I'm sharing here just a little. Uh, birds. This is the surf, the surf in clothes. Yes, it's a bird that is surfing, yes, close to the waves in the rocky areas in the in the Peruvian coast. Yeah. I remember this one is a pretty popular, easy to find, but I didn't have the chance before. And the day that I found it, I made thousands of videos, photos. Uh, I give the memory card to my assistant just to save the most important pictures. And well, he had a mistake. And this is the only picture that I have of this bird after 100 and 100 pictures. Yes, he delayed. But well, it's close to here, just, just 12 hours from Cusco. So I will go this Sunday to Ballestas Islands and the rocky areas to, to find again this bird. So no problem. The plant cutter. The plant cutter is a Cotinga bird that is in the north part of Peru. You cannot imagine how dry is the area. Yes, and I arrived to this area at, at noon. It was 40 degrees Celsius. And I went, in that case, in a public bus, not with my car. And I forgot my only unique bottle of water in the bus. So I was there in the desert, in the desert, uh, in the dry forest at noon without water, waiting till the three o'clock to get the picture. But I did it. I got that picture. It's not my, my best picture, but I, I did it. Yeah. So it's fascinating when you involve yourself in this, this activity because it's the challenge of new birds Yes, better picture. So I, I, I want to invite you, yes, to explore, to explore the, the bird watching world. Tumbesian, a fly catcher, yes, also in the north of Peru, in this area that I mentioned, the endemic Tumbesian a song, Peru and Ecuador or the chestnut breast a mountain finch popular here in Cusco. Yes, in Tambomachay, uh, archaeological site 30 minutes from Cusco, and you can see this friend singing there. Or oh, the black metal tail. In Mayin a hummingbird. Well, hummingbirds are beautiful because they're colorful, yeah. But this one is, is amazing because it's black, but when you see the light showing to the gorget, explode in green colors, yeah. Well, a Moicano, yes, Astenes, no, pardon, a uh, Canigenis, yes, a brush finch, Cusco brush finch. 
creamy crest, uh, spin tail, another endemic. Well, all of those birds that I show in you to finish are the endemic birds or the bearded mountaineer, yes, that you can see in Wakarpai Lake too. Yes, it's one of the biggest hummingbird. It's not like the giant, the giant hummingbird is 20, 22 centimeters, but this one is 18 and has a beautiful color. So, so much elusive, yes, no easy to see, but in some month of the year, you can, you can watch, you can enjoy this, this bird. And well, maybe you can recognize some of these, these friends in Wakarpai Lake to finish the, the presentation. Yes, I wanna say that nature, one of the best treasures that we can leave to the next generations, but sometimes we see it so far away without realizing that we are really part of the nature. So please, just get in contact with your nature side. Yes, wake up. Yes, the, the nature side on yourself and discover the, the beautiful world. Yes, everywhere, remember in your garden, you will have one, two or three birds to enjoy. Yes, and sometimes, oh, it's the same bird, but sometimes we will see in different uh, behavior, doing different things. So sometimes nesting, sometimes feeding, sometimes fighting. Yes, you know that the birds are many territorials, especially the hummingbirds, but explore, explore yourself. Yes, uh, wake up your kid inside, your, your child in her inside and, and enjoy the nature. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Muchas much. Muchas gracias. Elise. That was wonderful, Jose. We have a couple of questions from our guests, if you wouldn't mind addressing from, um, Mario Waman, he would love to know why the male birds are so beautiful and colorful compared to the female birds. Okay, uh, thank you, Mario. Two reasons, yes. One is that always, always the female, the males will do everything to attract the females, yes. Do you remember when you go to the disco Yes, so when we go to some place and we want to be beautiful to say hello, are the same with the birds. Yes, the, the males, yes, will show up and the best way is with movements, with colors. The cock of the rock, yes, where is my... The cock of the rock is a national bird. It's also in Ecuador, Colombia. It's the favorite animal of my, my daughter. Yes, and this cock of the rock, it has also a dance. So it's not only the color. These birds move to the right and open the wings. Move to the left, open the wings. And <laughs> asking, yes, so regarding the attention of the female and the female always will be who decides, yes or not, clear. But also is to protect, protection. When one eagle, one animal, when predator comes, eh, the female will be dark, like, like, eh, like in the nest, the birds in the nest, and the, the, the male will call the attention. So the male will sacrifice, we can say, yes, according to protect, yes, the, the female and the, the kids, we will say the kids. And then from one of our guides, Abelardo Vignati, he would love to know if the seagulls that um, you see in the springtime and growing time, planting time, if um, they are mag migratory. Land, eh, I didn't understand, sorry. So Las gaviotas, dice, que se ven en, en época de plantación, if they are migratory or Peruvian. Uh, no, uh, short birds, uh, we will see in in the in the coast, in the in the shores, on the shores. Uh, so it's not related with the plantations. The, the migration is related with the temperatures. Yes, winter and summer. Yes, winter there comes here. Yes, winter here, move move there. So it's not related or it's not important. Yes, uh, definitely they will find food. Uh, here, but 
they are just running away. Yes, uh, the birds are not looking for food. Yeah, well, they are looking for food, but the most important, they are running away of the cold season. That's why they come to here. In Wakarpai, uh, also, well, it's just a coincidence that it will be at the same time of the corn plantation. And some birds that are here, they will feed of those birds. But in this case, I'm talking about the bobolink as example. Yes, it's not a short bird. Is in the migration time, but this bird is coming to the jungle, will pass through Wakarpai, and they will feed from the corn plantations, mice plantations uh, in those areas. Yes, but it's not related if I understood the, the question good. If not, if I didn't answer in the right way, please, uh, Marisol can share my email and I will be happy to, to answer. Absolutely, absolutely, no problem. If you have any questions, when we send the the um, recording, we're going to send here, uh, um, Jose Luis's email, so then you can contact him with any questions. Good. Um, I think somebody wanted to know something about uh, your binoculars. Yes. Uh, if you could- The specifications yeah. of your binoculars. Oh. <laughs> um, that's uh, Chio Saldariaga wants uh, the uh, binocular specifications. I think you described two types of binoculars. Okay, so I have different binoculars here. Sorry, I, I'm traveling a lot. Now it's coming the rainy season. So we're gonna be in quarantine again in, in my house with the rainy season. So now this month or these weeks, I'm traveling a lot. And I don't know where are my other binoculars, but uh, the monocular, is easy light that you can bring. And this one is 1050. Yes, the specification is here 1050. So has a good, uh, I don't know how to, to say, but gets in a- uh, Zoom. Uh, no, the, the light. The ah, most okay. important, the most important more than how close can you see the bird well, it's important, but for me, the most important is the light. How much light you can get into your, the binoculars to see the details. Because sometimes if are not so lighty, yes, too much light in the, in the binoculars, you are not gonna see that little yellow part here that will say to you, ah, is that bird and not that other bird. So remember that in the bird watching, the details, the details is the most important. Uh, I have the Swarovski. Uh, well, Swarovski is, is the best, the best one. Yes, because will be light and the quality of the light. And in this case, this one is just 10 uh, per 25. It's a small one. But I was mentioning about the, the most versatile, so I can recommend Nikon or Nikon. Yes, and in this case is 8 per 42. The first number means how many times you are approaching the, the view. So eight times closer could be, and 42 is the, the size, aperture. The, aperture. Aperture, the aperture, thank you, yes, I didn't realize. The, the aperture, yes, to get a light. Definitely, you will consider, okay, so there's another bigger, yes, more light, but it will be too heavy. So, if I'm going to a lake, I will drive and I will just walk some meters. You can bring a big one, I said to you, yes, with bigger a uh, bigger a uh, aperture. But if you are gonna walk, you're gonna walk one hour, two hours, sometimes this one sometimes could be a little heavy for us, yes. But definitely this Nikon, this one is a monarch tree, Nikon Monarch tree is a old one. But also I have, I don't know where is my other binocular that is proof stuff. A Nikon proof stuff seven, a eight or 10 per 42 is the most recommendable. Thank you very much, Jose Luis. Thank you so much for a fantastic talk. This has been super interesting. It's, I hope everybody's inspired to start bird watching. I certainly am. Uh, I've been very lazy so far, but I'm definitely going to give it a go. Thank can I say, can I say a big thank you? I'm listening in from Scotland and we are very oh, wow. 
and we are very envious of your fantastic colorful birds. <laughs> <laughs> I think probably the total that we have around here is definitely more, no more than about 250. And I just wanted to say a big thank you. I think the photographs were simply stunning. We have been to the cloud forest and we did see um, a handful of the birds you showed and it just makes us think we'll have to come back. <laughs> you have to come back, you have to come back. And this no, is thank you for giving me the opportunity to get in your houses and to share this, this hobby with you. Yes, I want to ask you, yes, Marisol, 30, 34 seconds, just to share <laughs> a video that I made for you, just to finish this, this presentation, please. This is in Manu, uh, two weeks, I think, ago, uh, November 8th. Thank you, Jose Luis. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, I'm, again, Jose Luis, fabulous photos, fabulous talk. I think everybody's very excited. And I just wanted to let you know that in uh, we are going to have uh, an extension into December of our uh, online with our expert series, which is very, very happy to be have been able to, to organize. And uh, we pledge at Aracari to take you to different parts of Peru, all of Peru. That's one of our pledges. So we are going to be covering Arequipa in our next talk um, and the convents of Arequipa, the treasures of this wonderful city. And, uh, and then the last talk of our series on the 10th of December will be with Dr. Ricardo Morales, who discovered the Huaca de la Luna, the Moche site in northern Peru, and that will be amazing. So I hope you can tune in. We're going to send you the details on an email later on today. And everybody, thank you so much again, and see you next week, I hope. Take care then. Happy Thanksgiving. And happy Thanksgiving, Jose Luis. Thank, thank you. you from Canada. <laughs> Now we'll go thank here. you. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Have a great day.